Hello everyone. Over the past while, uh, things like uh, oil pipelines and economic things and all sorts of that sort of thing have been in the news. That's not surprising given that the price of oil has uh, been below $30 a barrel uh, for a while or has been hovering around that mark at the very least. I haven't checked the price today. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the West Texas price. Uh, other oil markets have, uh, have lower prices than that. So there's been a lot of hand-wringing over a number of pipeline projects that various companies want to build. And there's, there seems to be a, a, an irrational fear of these pipelines being built. Now, the reason I say it's irrational is because the pipelines themselves are not particularly dangerous compared to the alternatives. Uh, considering the Keystone XL pipeline that is supposed to go down to the Gulf Coast, uh, that one would take the place of however many bajillions of rail cars that are currently transporting crude and similar products down to those refineries down there. So if, if this pipeline is going to replace rail traffic, that would have a number of advantages. The first being pipelines produce less overall environmental impact than rail transport does. Rail transport burns energy to move the, the, uh, the product, and it has, but it has to move all the tanker cars as well and it has to follow along rails up and down hills and, and all of that, that jazz. So you've got usually a diesel engine pulling the, the, the train, so you're burning diesel, you're, and you're running across the countryside. Same as a pipeline would, you're running across the countryside. And all it takes is a train to derail, and now you've got an environmental disaster. And that's not so far-fetched. We've seen enough of those recently that it shouldn't surprise anyone that transporting oil by rail is going to have similar potential impacts to a pipeline rupture. Now, pipelines do have the potential risk that if they do rupture, you can end up with a lot more product getting spilled all at once. But proper monitoring would cause the flow to shut down if there is a sudden change in pressure characteristics anywhere along the pipeline. Uh, and that's what you have to do with any kind of pipeline. It doesn't matter whether it's water or oil or uh, anything. If, if you have a leak, particularly a substantial environmentally impacting one, like on the scale of a train derailment with cars dumping, uh, uh, dumping product into rivers and so on, you're going to be able to detect a pressure differential. You're going to be able to see that you're getting X amount of pressure here but over here, after the break, you've got a lower pressure that's not accounted for by the distance. So it's entirely possible to monitor the pipeline effectively enough that you know if it's failed very quickly and you can actually shut the floodgates off. Uh, you, of course, then you've got the risk of things getting on fire and so on. Uh, but it's harder to light some of this on fire than you might think. And on top of that, trains can catch fire when they crash too. So, you know, I'm not entirely convinced that 
the environmental impact of operating the pipeline is actually worse or, or even the same as operating the, the rail uh, traffic. Now you also have the disadvantage if you're transporting the oil by rail you don't have the rail capacity for other things like food and other things that might uh, take up that space and overall you're raising the economic cost of transporting other things because the available transport lines are jammed with the oil. Now the same thing is, is uh, affecting uh, the pipelines from Alberta to the west coast and an extension of the pipelines to the east uh, and it, it's there's a lot of this environmental allergy to it. There's also a large NIMBY faction. Nobody wants the pipeline in their backyard. Uh, and, you know, to an extent I can understand that. I wouldn't want the pipeline necessarily in my backyard either. But I also understand why you want to build one. And there's certainly certainly ways that you can avoid the uh, additional impact. There's already rail line rights of way with uh, trains carrying this dangerous material going in those directions anyway. So why not put the pipeline along that same path? Or put it along a major transport route like the Trans-Canada Highway or something like that. There's already dangerous goods going along those routes. So I don't buy this notion that it's just too dangerous, we shouldn't have it. Uh, that doesn't follow. Now, there are some legitimate concerns, uh, potentially, like say you, you get a pipeline going to the West Coast and now you've increased your shipping traffic at particular ports. That may well be a valid concern. If there isn't room for the traffic, it's just not going to improve things. But if you can handle the traffic, there's a substantial benefit to having the traffic come through because the ships are going to have to reprovision. That's going to be an economic injection to the surrounding uh, community of some amount. Uh, you've got the uh, support uh, for the uh, actual pipeline operations, the terminals, all of that stuff. So there's some potential upsides there as well. So realistically, we really should be building these pipelines. Uh, at least if the concern is transporting the oil and stuff cheaply and relatively safely with minimal environmental impact. Now, there's other concerns as well. In a lot of urban areas, infrastructure has been suffering lately. And that's because there hasn't been enough money to invest in the infrastructure. Now, I've got a whole bunch of thoughts on that. And part of the reason that we don't have this, these resources to invest in infrastructure is due to the severely broken way that our money system operates. And the fact that instead of printing money, the governments are borrowing it. And if you're borrowing money and spending it has exactly the same impact as, as printing the money and spending it economically. It's, you're, just, you're adding money to circulation. So it doesn't matter whether you printed it or borrowed it. You have the same net effect on inflation immediately. And if you print it, you don't have the interest cost dragging things down for 5 or 10 or 20 or 100 or 1,000 years afterward. So uh, anyway, that's a, a side topic. Check out positivemoney.org if you want to learn more about why our money system is horribly broken. Uh, but anyway... I, I read a headline today that a large proportion of people in Calgary, I think it was Calgary, might have been Alberta, but I think it was Calgary, uh, would prefer to see a billion dollar investment in infrastructure rather than a pipeline built. Now this is a false dichotomy, dichotomy because it's not the government that would be paying for the pipeline. That would be the private companies that want to build it. Uh, but the infrastructure investment would be coming via the government. So, you know, it, it's kind of a false dichotomy there. You can, you, you can have both. But in the current economic climate, the cost of building a pipeline may be prohibitive because 
unless the oil prices start showing an uptrend soon, it's not going to be clear that there's going to be a payoff for building the pipelines. You might as well stick with transporting things by rail, um, you know, until the demand equation evens out. Uh, it, it's it's hard to say. Uh, obviously, it's more likely that the price will recover. Uh, as the producers either go bankrupt or manage to cut back their production and the supply and demand equation balances out properly. But if it had to be a choice between infrastructure and the pipeline, I would also have to come down on the side of infrastructure. We need infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is not just things like roads and interchanges and things like that. It's also public buildings that house government agencies. It's, uh, it's rec centers. It's water uh, distribution systems, power grids, um, even telecom systems. Those are all infrastructure. And we definitely need to improve our infrastructure. Uh, for Pete's sake, we haven't done massive updates to things like power grids and water distribution systems, uh, partly because we haven't needed to. Uh, the systems we have have been working. But I know that in large parts of uh, the United States, for instance, uh, things like the power grid are barely functioning. And it doesn't take much to have a cascading failure. So you want to make sure that your infrastructure keeps up with the demand. And for instance, with the electric grid, we need to make sure the transmission capacity keeps up with the upcoming demand that's going to be placed on it with things like electric automobiles. Those will be coming. We will be doing electric automobiles eventually. Uh, we're going to have no real choice. Uh, either we're going to have to put up with horrible, horrible pollution from running diesel when the uh, gasoline runs out, uh, or we're going to have to use something that's cleaner at the point of use. And electricity is cleaner at the point of use. So if you can take a massive power generation installation, which if our baseline load goes up enough, a nuclear plant or two can cover that nicely if we have the transmission capacity to get it to where it's needed. If we, you know, we, we can do power generation much cleaner on a huge scale. That's just physics. So if, we, if our power grid keeps up with that, then we can actually have a practical deployment of, of electric automobiles that get charged, have supercharging stations, and all of that. The whole Tesla dream could come true. So we need to actually be continually investing in the infrastructure, the power grids, the schools, the hospitals, the you know, that sort of thing. We need to be keeping this stuff maintained so we don't accumulate a huge infrastructure debt that we have to catch up all of a sudden. So yes, I agree. If it's a choice between spending a billion dollars on infrastructure and having the pipelines to transport the oil, yes, we should spend the billion dollars on infrastructure. But we need to make sure it's the right infrastructure. Uh, and the reason we need to be doing this infrastructure investment continually is because if we do a massive infrastructure deployment all at once, say we build uh, a million lane kilometers of roads in the space of 10 years, and all of it has approximately the same reasonable service lifetime, then say 40 years or 50 years, we suddenly have this massive requirement that we have to redo, like replace it all, uh, massively overhaul it, all 
at the same time, again, we have to make that massive investment in, say, 50 years. It's the same massive investment to overhaul the things we built all at once. But if we can build the stuff over time, then we spread out the obsolescence periods. So then we have a more steady infrastructure, uh, well, baseline requirement, maintenance, and so on. Uh, and, you know, so using a massive infrastructure program to uh, stimulate the economy is risky down the road. Take a look at the United States interstate system. A massive amount of that was built as a huge make-work project. Now, it was a good project. The interstates are really nice. But the problem is, a lot of the, the, them are old now, and they're crumbling, and they need massive investments to fix them up. And that all came up at the same time, because they were all built at the same time. Now, some of that is partly due to the way the population dynamics have worked out over the past century. If you have a massive population growth, then you're going to have a massive need for infrastructure all at once. So that's, that's part of the problem there. But we need to avoid artificially creating those situations so that we can dampen the cycles on infrastructure investment costs. <clears throat> But anyway, uh, I, I've kind of lost a, the thread here, I'm not really focused, but uh, the general idea is, personally, I think we should be building at least some pipelines. And we should also be in, investing in infrastructure. Uh, the pipelines, though, for oil transport, for instance, are going to be of some limited utility once the oil uh, demand starts to tail off. And that will have to happen at some point. Eventually, the oil is going to run out. So it is going to have to tail off at some point. So worst case, if we don't build the pipelines, We'll spend a little bit more moving the oil around and have a little bit more environmental impact from that. But I think that will vanish in the noise long term. Uh, right, proper infrastructure, though, for our cities and transport and electric grids and schools and all of that, that is going to be a long-term investment with a long-term payoff. So that's why I come down on the side of infrastructure over pipelines, if it has to be a choice between the two. Anyway, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching.